Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. This video is featuring the new My Monthly Hero release for March 2023. I am using just the classic kit, but they also have the premium kit available as well. Um, the classic kit is the usual $36.99. The premium kit is $49.99. Uh, but one of the cool things about the premium kit is they also included two of the new neon watercolors, um, which is a really good way to try them out without having to like spend the money for them since it's such a low price point for all the items that you get. Um, but anywho, so today we're going to be talking about the card layouts here um, and how you can pretty much make them work for anything, which I think is, it's just a good kind of thing to have in your arsenal for when maybe you have product that you want to work with that you're not sure what to do with. So let's talk about what I'm doing. Here I am using my Misty. I've removed the foam pad because the cling background um, that I'm using already has the foam in it. And I am stamping on, what color cardstock are you? Um, <laughs> I should know that. But anyway, I'm stamping in clear embossing ink just so that it will be, um, I want there to be some texture in the background, but I don't want it to be competing with my focal point. So that is why I chose to do tone on tone stamping. This is Meadow, Meadow cardstock, by the way. Um, and you can do this by using the same color ink or a similar color ink um, stamped onto a green, like green ink stamped on green cardstock. But doing it with the clear embossing powder gives it a shine and a texture um, that the flat ink will will not give it. So this is just like a little extra added something to give my card some oomph because it is a relatively simple card. So now here I'm using the same background on white cardstock, but this time I'm going to stamp it in black. And I'm going to clear emboss this as well in order to make sure that it stays wet long enough for me to do the clear embossing, I'm actually gonna stamp it twice. And the reason I can do that is because of my Misty. Um, because it's not gonna move, I can stamp directly, you know, in the same spot again. But I'm going to do this and then add the clear embossing over it again, just for that shine and texture to add some more interest to my background. Um, added benefit if you have problems with your ink smearing. I typically don't and I'm using the um, Intense Black Ink from Hero Arts. Um, but if you do, by clear embossing it, it locks in the ink and then you have absolutely no smearing no matter what you're using. <laughs> um, but I will caution you that doing that with alcohol markers, the alcohol will cover, color the embossing. But anywho, so same thing, clear embossing powder over this, and then I will heat set it until it is all smooth and melty, and then we will move on to the next step of our process, which is going to be some ink blending. Uh, so back to the point. Back to the point of the video. <laughs> Besides making these two super cute cards, and hopefully, if you're a subscriber to um, the kits, this will give you some inspiration. But Sometimes just having one or two kind of go-to card layouts that you know you can use with anything um, really is very helpful in getting something done. So sometimes we don't always feel our most creative, uh, which is fine, but we still need a card. Here I've just picked out um, a rainbow of colors. I knew that I was going to be using the, like making a rainbow of fruits. <laughs> um, and so I chose the reactive inks just because I wanted to do a little bit of kind of splashing in the background and shimmer splashing in the background. But if you're uh, not interested in the water splatters, you can still do the shimmer over regular um, dye inks. Just I chose the ones that react with water because I like that aspect in my background. I will say, uh, if you have not watched my videos before, I like to do my ink blending twice. So I started with Fruit Punch and then I moved on to, I think it's Creamsicle. Um, and then I'm going to go back in with the Fruit Punch to make sure everything is blended. And you'll see me kind of go back and forth between my colors as we uh, get through the rainbow. I did want to know it is much more heavy on the red, orange, yellow 
than it is on the purple blue side and that is because that's how my fruits are so I have many more like red, orange, yellow fruits than I do blue. In fact, the only blue I have is blueberries and even then they're more purple than blue. <laughs> so um, just something to note there. If you were putting, if you were doing a rainbow background for something else, you may want to make your swatches in the beginning just a little bit smaller, which fortunately Hero, if you're into ink blending brushes, they have very small ones. So they m make it easy to do that. Um, but anywho, so sometimes we are in our most creative and we still need to get cards done, whether it's somebody's birthday or a baby shower or, you know, fill in the blank, whatever it is that you oftentimes, which is very unfortunate, um, what I need one, it's usually like a sympathy card or something that I don't have made that I need to make for because I just don't make them that often. Um, so these layouts will work with just about, I don't want to say every single image, but I struggle to think of one that they would not work with um, just because they're good balanced designs. And that's really the key to having something that is kind of like a fail safe is that is just, it's balanced and it's easy to recreate. Um, of course, you can do variations of it, you certainly don't have to do them exactly, um, but nonetheless. So here's me splattering on the um, clean water onto that background, and then I will blot that up with um, just a little bit of a paper towel. And then I'm going to use the white iridescent shimmer spray from Hero Arts. You do want to make sure that you shake this up very well as all of the shimmer sits in the bottom. Um, so if you want it to be shimmering, which is the whole point, I think, of using it, uh, you got to shake it up. So I'm just spattering that on and then I will set that aside to dry. Another way, like I said, you can mix them up. So you could do the card design, um, which is like a center focal point uh, for the orange card, the squeeze the day, uh, just with a regular background, an A2 size background. I decided that I was going to switch mine up just a little bit. And so now I'm trimming down this panel to three and three quarters by five which will then give me a solid green card base that it sits on. I'm also going to do two things to set this panel apart. I'm going to add a little bit of ink blending around the edges, which is I'm using the Key Lime Fizz here. Uh, you could certainly go darker if you wanted that. And then the other thing I'm going to do is darken the edges. So I pulled out my Forever Green and I'm just going to run this along the edge of my cardstock. This isn't going to add really anything to the front, but it will create a degree of separation between the two same color pieces of cardstock when we put the card together. I'm going to stamp out all my fruits, all the fruits. I think the only fruit I didn't stamp was the plum, to be honest. <laughs> um, but I'm going to stamp them all out. I am going to use that same uh, intensified black ink from Hero Arts because I am going to be coloring with my alcohol markers. But you could certainly color these with any medium. None of the shadows or color placement would change. Um, some of the things that I do, like the color glazing, won't work for like colored pencils in the same way. Uh, you'd have to do more layers. Um, but nonetheless, all of the shadows and the placements and, and all of those things would be in the same spot, no matter what medium you're using. So back to the card. So that, um, that center focal point where, you know, you have an, in, maybe a little bit more of an interesting background, you don't even necessarily need the interesting background. You literally just need that center focal point. Mine's a square. Yours can be a circle. Yours can be... Uh, a diamond, a hexagon, it could be whatever shape you want it to be, but it would be in the upper portion of your card. So that way the eye is drawn there and your design looks interesting, but still balanced. For the fruit card, we are making everything symmetrical, which is the easiest way to make things look balanced because it's the same on both sides. <laughs> so there's really no way to kind of mess it up. So by doing a panel in the middle, and again, I add in an interesting background, um, 
you know, to make it kind of pop because my center panel is plain with my, we'll then have my images on top of it, but you could reverse it. So if you wanted a plain background, then you could put your more interesting aspect across that, um, or your more interesting background across that panel in the middle. But because it's symmetrical, it's always going to work. And I, I mean, I'm using fruit today, but you could use whatever you have. You could put butterflies in there. You could put flowers. You could put uh, rocket ships or pickup trucks or just whatever. But because the design, the layout of the card is balanced, they will work with any sort of imagery that you are trying to create. And you can do it with ease. Like there's nothing that's special about it. Um, all you need is a, a paper trimmer or a pair of scissors. So now we're moving on to the coloring. I used, so several of the images are purple uh, or violet, including my grapes, <laughs> my, um, my grapes, my, what are those? Bla I colored them like blackberries, I think. Less like raspberries, more like blackberries. Um, and then also my blueberries. This will be the base for my blueberries. And I'm going to slightly change the colors for the raspberries or blackberries, whichever you prefer. I think they're drawn like raspberries, but that's not the way I colored them. That's called creative license. <laughs> that's called creative license here in the, the world of card making um, or art, really. Uh, so anywho, I'm going to use the same base and then I'm going to... Um, do the color glazing over top of it so that I'm changing the hue of the color just slightly, but not so much that I have to pull out um, like f other color combinations. So here I've done the purple base. I'm going to go in with a pink and I'm going to put that right over top and it's going to change it just enough to be a little bit more, I don't want to say magenta, a, just a little bit more pink. And then Eventually, I forgot about the black or the blueberries. I apologize before I moved on. I guess I was just really excited to color this apple. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not really sure why I forgot about it, but I did. Honestly, it's probably because somebody in my family interrupted me while I was in the middle of doing what I was doing. Because um, that happens quite a bit when you have children in the house. Um, so as far as story time goes... Um, Really, I mean, there hasn't been, it's been a little bit busy and I'm always backed up. You guys know that. My husband asked me, he's like, how can you always be behind? And I was like, because things just happen. Like they just happen to me and I have to address them. And I'm sure it's because I don't address them like a little at a time. So for example, uh, this weekend, Miss Caitlin was sick. I shared that in the last video. So we were kind of crunched for time to get done the other things we would normally be getting done. Um, and so I came upstairs while she was napping because now I have this opportunity that she's napping to kind of knock out some things. And my email has like this big blaring warning across it that says you must reduce your storage in order to send and receive emails. So, okay. Like now it's, I, I don't have a choice. I have to do it because I work for myself, which means working with a lot of different companies, which means they have to be able to get a hold of me. And do you know what they don't have? My cell phone number. Do you know what they do have? My email address. So then I spent an enormous amount of time trying to go through my email to delete things that I don't need and keep things that I do need. And it's just very time consuming. So like there's a couple of like things that I could go in there and kind of quickly get rid of, like do little word searches for um, one of the companies that I work with. God love them. I understand they are running a business, but they send out more emails than any other company I work for combined. Like they just oh my gosh, so many emails, my people. And I was like, searched for this particular name, select all, it picked like 150 emails, delete, yep, get rid of them, bye, bye. <laughs> so here we're going to do the color glazing again. This time, I prefer reds that are more of a blue red, but there is more of a tomato red, which is more of an orange or a yellow based. So I left my apple a true like bluish red. And then I 
went over the with the cherries with an orange to give them more of that like bright tomato-y red. And again, this isn't going to be a huge deal. And if you didn't see them right next to each other, you may not even notice that there was that big of a difference. However, because one is going to be right on top of the other, it will make it stand out. Moving on to the bananas. Um, and also, if you are a person who likes puns, this set is for you. There are puns. <laughs> there are so many fruity puns in this set. Um, and there's other ones like hello and thank you. Um, you can pair that thank you with um, uh, cherry much. Thank you, cherry much. Uh, but you don't, you don't have to. You can use just the yellow. Um, but there's a bunch of them in there that are kind of funny. I imagine this would be a very good kit for me um, for making cards for my kids. Like, you know, making them little lunchbox notes or um, using them to write them little encouraging notes, uh, things like that. I imagine that that like those little punny things would be very cute. Um, so then I think the bananas is the only thing really that is yellow. And then we're going to move on to the orange. I colored the orange the same way on both cards. So I'm only going to show it to you here. Um, and then the large slice uh, that is you see on the other card, I colored it the same way that I colored this half slice. So you are seeing it. It's just you're seeing it a little bit differently. Um, but they were both colored the same way. And um, again, even with your oranges, like you, you can go... Um, even more on like the reddish side if you're into that and then you would just um take out the lightest color which for me is a y08 and add in a darker color um more on the red side so like an r29 ish would change the hue of your orange so that it was less yellow and more um like an orangish red which they also come in and is very pretty um but so anywho, so it's just like these things happen to me and they don't, they preclude me from getting done the things I need to get done. And then that is how I am always behind. <laughs> that is how I'm always behind. And like, I know that I'm a person who is not super organized. So like every time I sign up for something, it goes directly into my calendar. So there are some things that I use, um, like some companies that I participate in, and I participate every month. So like this, Hero Arts, I'm on their design team. I get my assignments, I get my assignment dates. And as soon as those come out at the beginning of the month, they go right into my calendar. Other companies that I guest design for or reach out to me to do guest designing, when I get those, I put them directly into my calendar as like sometimes even before I send the email to say yes, um, just so that way I always know what I have due. But then things happen because life happens. Like I'm not mad about it. I'm not blaming them. Like sometimes it just happens. So one of the things that happens is sometimes they will change the date of things manufacturing got pushed back or shipping's taking too long or whatever and then they have to change a date and now I've committed to it and now they change a date to a date that I have something else going on with another company um, to which I typically try not to bow out I usually try to do them both if I can um, like if I have the product to do it but sometimes it just sometimes it's just too much a lot of times, a lot, a lot of times. So I am still learning on my journey of being my, like working for myself. I am still learning that, how to find that balance. Um, and like, I think I told you earlier, I don't think I told you the whole story, but we had an issue with our washer. So I lost time for the washer people to come out. Do you hear my dogs barking at nothing? They're barking at nothing. Just to be clear, they're in their houses safely. Nothing is happening outside. Nobody is attempting to break in and murder us. There's literally nothing happening. But apparently they must have heard something somewhere within, I don't know, a five mile radius and it caused them to bark during my voiceover. You know, because when would be a more convenient time to bark than when mom is doing things? That's my side note for that. Moving on. Um... What was I what was I even talking about? I can't I cannot move on to the next step because I don't remember what I was saying. 
mom brain. Uh, so here we're back to the blueberries. I'm doing that same blue um, or that same purple base, the same as the grapes. And then I'm going to go in with a blue and color right over top of them to give them more of a blue hue. Um, oh, so the, the calendar thing. So like I try my best to get all the things done, but sometimes it just ain't happening. And then especially when I lose time during the week because of other, you know, just life things that pop up, which is why I chose to work for myself so that when those things popped up, I would be available to take care of them. Here, I'm going to go in, I'm going to put my dies in place. Um, all of the fruits have coordinating dies in this kit, which I think is super kind of nice. <laughs> um, and if you like the one um, layout for the squeeze the day, you could swap out any of those fruits and they would still work really, really nicely. So with the square size that I ended up with, it's not a square really, it's not exactly a square. The square size that I ended up with was two and three quarters by two and a half. That is what my, because I needed it. I'm sorry. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. That's, that's what I did. No, that's a lie. It's two and three quarters. That part is accurate, but that is the, the width. The length was three and a quarter. I apologize. So two and three quarters by three and a quarter. Um, and that was so that I could fit the sentiment on there. If you are using a, um, a sentiment that is, has a coordinating die, you wouldn't need to leave the space for the sentiment, but I was not. So I needed somewhere to stamp it. Um, and then you can do this or not do this. It's entirely up to you. Well, your whole card design's up to you. You know how I feel about that. You do you, boo. Um, but I decided I was going to pop mine up just to add a little bit of added interest. So I'm going to glue down my embossed panel onto another piece. This is the same color. This is that meadow cardstock. Um, and you can see on the edges how it is separated and that's because it's such a small thing but because we added that dark green ink around just the edge um, and then I'm going to remove the paper for my um, foam adhesive I'm going to put a little bit of liquid adhesive on like behind on that so that I can be sure that I will have a little bit of wiggle room um, and then I will put this in place again centered to the top and then you can still see this beautiful background that we have. We have a very good focal point. And then you just fill in whatever focal point you're feeling. Another thing that you can do, and again, you don't have to, but this for me helps me, it helps the card kind of come together for me. And that is adding just a little bit of shadow underneath your images. I'm not going to add a ton. I'm just going just to add just a little line. And this is going to ground my image so that it doesn't look like it's just floating in space. And to do this, I'm just using a very light gray and a medium gray. That's it. And then, you know, I always have to add little... Um, details because I can't stop myself. So I went in with my white gel pen. I added some lines to the slices portion. And then I also added just a little bit of a highlight on the full orange. From there, I am going to add glitters because that's how I roll. And I am using the um, sparkle lacquer from Hero Arts. Um, and I'm just adding that, just lines of that along the little slices. Uh, you can really add this however you would like. They also have just a clear one. Um, if you're a person who loves the look of glossy accents but hates the way that it clogs, the clear lacquer is a good one because it does not clog the same way. So then that card is done. Now here we're moving on to building up this one. First of all, can I just say that I totally love this background? Like it's rainbow, it's sparkly. I think it's super fun. That's just me. Not everybody loves rainbows. I'm fine with that. No judgment for your um, love or no love of rainbows. But here on this channel, we love rainbows. Uh, so anywho, I'm putting on the same um, foam adhesive and then I will do the same thing. I will add that little bit of liquid adhesive behind it uh, so that I have a little bit of wiggle room. And then I am going to try my very best to adhere this so that it has equal parts on the top 
and the bottom. So it's a very symmetrical card. You can turn this into a vertical card versus a horizontal card um, and still use the same layout. But because I have so many pieces parked, it definitely makes more sense for me to use it as a horizontal card. So I'm just going to go through. I kind of laid everything out. I knew where it was going to go. I did originally, I was like, oh, I'm going to use the press and seal trick, which you guys know I've been a big fan of lately. But I think it's because of the foam adhesive. I had a little bit of issue with it. And um, so it, if I had to do it all over again, I would not adhere the panel to the card base. Uh, I would use the press and seal and then I would adhere that all as one panel. Um, that's why you see some of them have like a little bit of glue on them, but it's totally okay. It ended up working out. I had a very good idea of where they were going. So eyeballing it wasn't really a big problem. And then I, of course, I went in rainbow order. <laughs> um, for the most part. Um, so those kiwis are a little bit before my yellow bananas, but that's what worked best for my layout. So sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Uh, here is where you'll be able to see all of those different tones and how they are slightly different from one another. The pink versus the blue on top of the berries and then that orange that we used on top of the cherries. Um, so just to get that color variation to make it look not so same same. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing with the shadow underneath these and just in case you were wondering I um I am coloring over the bottom white edge of the die cuts and I did in both cases so that the shadow is right up against the coloring um, that I've done of the image. I will blend that back out with a lighter color and then for this one not the other one because it was on like it didn't bother me when they were up against each other, but this one, it, you could really see the white outlines and I didn't like it. So I did go in just with the same markers that we've already been using and fill in those white areas where one was up against another piece of colored fruit. Obviously the background is white, so I'm not worried about the white edges up against the white, but so just where they overlaid another image and I needed to kind of hide that white outline I had going on. So once that was done, we bring back out the white gel pen to add in our highlights and then back out the glitter pen to add some sparklies to it. Um, so yeah, anyway, my whole life is just wild because stuff pops off and you have no control over it. And that's how everybody's life is. And don't stress about it. Give yourself some grace. That's, that's the moral of the story. Um, I do hope that you will give these layouts a try when you are kind of in a time crunch or when you're not, just to see, you know, if that's something that works for you. I really do believe that you could make just about any image work with either one of these. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're interested, uh, if you're watching when this video first goes live, if you're interested in the blog hop and your chance to win, I will link that below. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.